Today we're taking a look at the Foundation Passport 2. And this is a air-gapped hardware wallet, uh, primarily just for Bitcoin. Uh, but it is one of the most secure ways to store and access your Bitcoin. So I went ahead and picked this up. We're going to go ahead and open it in this video and take a look at it. But there you can see it is a batch 2 unit. And one of the nice things that I really like about these is they do ship it with a security seal that has a serial number on it. I did get this direct from Passport or direct from Foundation Devices. Let's go ahead and get this opened up. And one of the really cool things about this device, if you haven't seen it yet, is it looks like a old school Nokia phone. It's got a really unique design to it. So let's go ahead and open it up. And there you can see it. So this itself is actually air gapped. You've got the screen with a directional pad here. You've got a left select button, right select button, and you have your numeric keypad that you would normally have on an older phone. And if we look at the back, there's a camera here. And what that's for is that is to scan a QR code to send uh, your funds. Basically you can use it for uh, multi-factor authentication and on the bottom you see a USB port this is power only there is no data that is allowed to pass through that port and there is also a micro SD card slot at the top that you can use for multi-factor authentication as well so very nice layout there let's go ahead and open the rest of the box And here we can see we have a USB-C cable. So what they include here is a lightning connector to the micro SD card. And they also include a USB-C to a micro SD card. And these are used if you want to transact with a mobile phone. You can just plug this direct in or even a tablet. You can just plug this direct in. Put the micro SD card, which they also include. And it is a SanDisk 8 gig. And then in order to use this, you need to install the their Envoy app, which we will be doing. Uh, they do give you, um, and this is a terrible form, and it has the 24 C word here, and also gives you a uh, spot to for your backup code. And they also give you two stickers. And again, this is foundation devices. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install the app on my phone. All right, we're gonna go ahead and boot up the device. And here it's going to say, welcome to Passport. Congratulations on taking custody of your Bitcoin and reclaiming your sovereignty. And we're just going to go ahead and hit next. And it's going to ask us how we would like to set it up. We can either do manual or the Envoy app. I'm going to be doing the Envoy app. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. And it's going to want us to select the Envoy app. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we need to open the Envoy app, and then we're going to scan the QR code. Once you go through the initial setup of scanning the QR code and uh, just validating that it hasn't been tampered with, it passes the security checks, uh, you'll set up a PIN code. Once you set up your PIN code, it's going to ask you if you want to update the firmware. We're going to skip the firmware update for now. And now we need to uh, basically generate our seed. And we have the option we can either restore from a backup we can restore a seed phrase, or we can create a new seed phrase. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and create a new seed phrase. But if you already have a ledger or anything like that, technically you could import that seed into here. And it would basically act as an additional uh, private key device. We're going to say create new seed. And then it's going to ask us if we want to generate the phrase now. We're going to go ahead and say yes. And it's going to generate that seed says saving seed and now it's going to tell us it actually gives us a warning screen here saying it's going to show it 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this off camera and I'm just gonna take my card and record down all 24 words of my seed phrase. Once we've written those down, it's gonna tell us that they've been created and saved. We're gonna go ahead and say next. And here we can see it's going to create an encrypted backup on the micro SD. So let's go ahead and say yet next. And now this screen is going to show the backup code. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off screen. And you're going to want to write that down in the backup code section. And it's going to just give us a grid of numbers. We're going to go ahead and write all those down. Now, one of the things that it did not prompt us to confirm the seed. However, it is going to prompt us to confirm the backup code. So here we need to re-enter those numbers that we just saved. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And there we can see we've entered the code correctly. Now it's gonna write the backup file. And here we go, it tells us it's configured and we can start using the device. And here we can see we are now in the dashboard and we've got a few options. We can sign with a QR code. We can sign with the micro SD. We can verify any address we want. We can manage our account. If we go down to manage account and we go to connect wallet, here we can see all the options of the various wallets that we can connect to. So we can do Wasabi, Spectre, Sparrow, Simple Point, Bitcoin Wallet, Nunchuck, Envoy, which is their own app, the Bitcoin Electrum Wallet, Casa, BTC Pay, uh, Blue Wallet, and Bitcoin Core. So those are all excellent choices. And then once we have those connected, uh, whenever we want to send a transaction, we can just say scan with QR code that pops up in the wallet. We can scan the code. This device is never connected to the internet. It truly is an air gap device that basically is going to be almost like a multi-factor authentication. You know, you're gonna go to confirm the transaction uh, in the wallet if you have an encrypted wallet. Um, like Bitcoin Core, you're going to go ahead and enter your passphrase to send it, but then you also need to do a secondary confirmation um, security check early with this device by scanning the QR code. 